Right, well, let's see if we can get this 15 minute job finished. I put the chain and everything back on. Can't remember how much I've done yesterday. You can see I've put the clutch locking tool in. I put that on and torqued it up to 40 pound. I can't find a torque figure for that, but that's about BSA. Uh, what I know what the, I know I only needed to 30 pound on the, this. So there's the space that I made up that time, and there is the split collet which the rotor locks onto. So now then, the engine hasn't moved at all. So hopefully, that means that all my little marks will be fine. So the first thing we have to put on, these things have got, oh, that got stuck on there. Oh, that's it. It. I know that mark lined up with the end of that. So that goes on there. You know these are sort of big bolts but they are very tiny screwdrivers. Oh. I'm going to put the rotor on last because I've got a mark for that as well. Something wrong here. These are not count, so what's the word? Counterboard to take these heads. My hands have got a little bit of oil on, so bought a set of screwdrivers with like rubber grips because of the way these get slippery as soon as I got a bit like petrol on them the rubber went all horrible and sticky and nasty so I don't know what to do there unless I can get some of that absolutely solvent resistant Now then, these have Mark there, mark there, that goes to those two marks. That mark goes to the red dot on the rotor. The washer, lock washer.
and I'll just put these on and line them up, tighten them up, bring you back. That's tightened down exactly on its marks. As I say now, I've got that mark there, which is for this. Whoops. Oh, the spaces must go on the outside. Uh, let me switch you off again. Right, so I've got everything on. All the spaces are the right way around now. These, there's two little marks here. They line up perfectly with those. And this little arrow marks up perfectly with that. Now, you may remember I've mentioned that although we've sort of locked the crankshaft so it can't turn, sometimes when you tighten in this nut, the rotor will move. So I made up this little spanner. Luckily, I don't think the early rotors, or I may be thinking of the PVLs, didn't have a hex on there. And I actually made up a little sort of pin spanner to go in those holes. But we do have a hex here. We've got this set. That doesn't go on there, does it? That's the clutch one. That goes on there. Or tighten it up. Okay, that's fine. We've got a same air gap. That's All right, still lined up, still lined up, still lined up. Okay. Right. Now we can take this out, clutch on. Okie dokie. So, you may remember with these clutch plates, the inner and the outer one are dished. Da, 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 da. So it's that one. Oh, let's not forget. Put that in. Then the middle one is just perfectly flat. Because this is a three plate clutch. If it was a four plate clutch, there'd be two perfectly flat ones. Tell you what, if when I put this all back together, the clutch, the uh, kickstart doesn't work, I'll throw a wobbler. That's not right. Come on, I'm missing something here. Oh, no, I am right, I am right, don't worry, but I've forgotten to put that on. And, didn't I have some spaces under that? Oh, yeah, under, under, all right, so that goes. And that goes on facing inwards. What's that? 
corn sauce plates on. God, old age is a terrible thing. Mind you, as I know from the, uh, what do you call it? The statistics from YouTube, I know most of you are getting on to being my age. underneath it let me search me right pad two washes Then that then that 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 Three of them, I think it's the three strong ones we put in. never know with me these days there's probably some vital part missing that heart attack might not have affected my heart but it certainly seems to have affected my thinking capabilities Let me tighten these up. All right, so we're all together. Chain tension and everything. Clutch cable put on. All right, clutch seems to be working. Let me drop this down and make sure the kickstart turns. Right, well, I'm only setting myself up for embarrassment here, but honestly, I haven't tried this yet. I suppose I should try it, and if it doesn't work, if it works, then I should switch the camera on. If not, let's see. Let's pull the clutch in first and see if it... Alright, there's the clutch free. And here we go. Well, we will look at that. Will you look at that? What is this? Oh, man. 
You saw that terminal? Oh. Don't tell me I had something like a valve drop here. No, that couldn't be it. Could it? <laughs> I told you I should have tried that. That was all done. Now. Oh, I was going the wrong way, wasn't it? Forget this gearbox is the way Alright. Let me take the spark plug out so I can turn the engine over. No, I can't turn the engine. Or I can turn it a tiny little bit. And then this will work slightly, and then we're stopped. So all that engine, all that gearbox and clutch work was for nothing. It's something else. Something is jammed up in the motor. One of those amazing coincidences that it just happened after Bob had finished riding the section. He come to a standstill, switched it off, and then when he went to restart it, that was jammed up. Oh God! Of course, one of the problems with this bike is that it's so tightly packed into the frame. I've got to drop the engine to get the top half off. All right, let me take the rocket covers off, see what's what, and then. All right, so. I'm going to take the timing case off. See, I'm, I'm really confused. You know, I've got to look at the video again because I've forgotten already, but the kickstart seemed to turn all right, and then it wouldn't. So it went round quite a long way, but I haven't turned the engine. Otherwise, I would have had to redo the ignition timing. So I really don't know what's going on. But we've got a lot of moving parts in here that could jam. So what we're going to do is pop this off. I've taken the uh, gear change lever off because it gets in the way a bit. Uh, as I say, I started to take, I took the carbon then off and I thought, wait a minute, before I drop the engine and do all sorts in the top, it probably isn't in the top at all. Well, I've taken the cover off here and I can see both push rods and they haven't jumped off or anything. This one turns fine. So we're going to take this off. All right, so I'll take it off and then I'll bring it back. All right, there's that off. That took some getting off. Everything looks good, but laying in the bottom here, I found a washer and I found a washer with a chunk out. So let me put the kickstart back on, see what happens. All right. Nope. What the hell is this? Well, I'm wrong again. I just thought, let me try something. Oh no. I am wrong again. I turned this. Well, you see, that all turns over to there.
and now it's stopped. Well, I can see an inlet valve open there. Hang on, let me move you around a bit. Right, so look, I've marked the rotor to the red dot. We're going forward. All right, won't we'll go forward. So there's one complete revolution. One and a half. And then it stops. One and a half revolutions. Let me... Uh, <laughs> I was going to say, let me look at something and I can't think what to look at. So let me think about this a moment. Right, well we're looking for anything and I've found something. Exhaust camshaft look is sticking out. Good, an eighth of an inch. Now, there's no pressure on it, but it won't go back in. Now, don't forget these are brand new camshafts. Look at that. That's rattled half a revolution of the engine. Right, then that's how it should be. So what the hell is jamming? if that's what it is. Uh, which way did I go there? Oh, wait a minute. Are you watching this? It's turning over all the time now. So... That washer, see there's two washers that go on there. So that washer must have been the other one for there. Okay, so that one came out, big deal. Ah! If that one came out, wasn't on, fell out, this could walk. Did it walk that out? That's the weirdest bloody thing ever. Let me see if I can find another, or make even, a washer that thickness. There isn't meant to be anything there, I'm sure. I'll look in the book, but I don't think there is. That one, can you see, oh, you can see everything. That one was stuck to the, 
is sticking on there. Now I remember when I put these in. See now that one is sticking out. That one's not lined up with that. God almighty, what's going on? I didn't like them when I put them in, do you know that? They were a really tight fit. Let me just go File a bit of a burr off that, just as an experiment. I want to put this cover back on and see if this will work. Alright, before I did that, I thought, let me just turn this over with a kickstart. And it turned over and turned over. And this pinion has walked off that shaft. which means it must be under some pressure, some outward pressure. And as I said, that, I mean, that should just, it's so tight in that. Yeah, don't like that at all. Let me play on with this. Right, I have just, uh, hang on. Put a straight edge across there and measured the distance from this face to the face of the case. And then I measured, I put the same straight edge across and I measured from the face to here, which is what presses on that, right? It's 45 thou gap. I'll bet you then I should have put some thrust washers of some sort on there. I mean, there's thrust washers on these. I almost thought, well, let me measure them, but they're all different, right? There's thrust washers on there. What do you want to bet? There's thrust wash should be thrust washers on there. And this has just walked out. Well, it's coming up to lunchtime, so let me go and get online to Hitchcock's and look at their passbook. I wonder if I can download their passbook. But as you saw, definitely, when that was stuck out here, it jammed. When I pushed it back in, it didn't jam and the engine turned. Right, talk to you shortly. All right. I've checked the passbook, there is no sign anywhere and I checked several different pages because the, the Enfield passbook, well the early ones, are really poor. They don't do explode diagrams, it's just like all the given parts are laid out and drawn. So you know when you look at it you'll see a bunch of round things and you don't know what they are, where they go, so anyway. It doesn't show any, which I didn't think because I would have checked. Now, these measurements, the machining seems to be poor. It may be these, because these are new ones, so they're probably from India. But when I measure from here to there, it varies. And similarly, when I measure the depth into the outer case, that varies as well. But I reckon that a 40,000 so the thrust washer would just nicely give me a few thou play, which is, I think, going to be excellent. So, I just wonder what to make them out of, and I've got some nice bronze. So I'm going to make two 40 thou thrust washers for on there. I might make new ones for the other bit as well, we'll see. So let me make these, put it together, see if it kicks over. Right, that's got those two on there. Got these two on here. Let me put the case on and see what happens. 
that case does not want to go on there it's absolutely tight just on on those camshafts what the hell hang on right well so I measured across the two camshafts and I measured the sort of the, the distance between the outside of each and then I measured the the width of the two holes that were going and there was a couple of thou difference the camshafts were like a couple of thou so I wondered if it was because the camshafts were under pressure so I took it a top dead center so there was no pressure on the camshafts assuming that would give them a you know a little bit of wobble in their bushes and I put a little chamfer on all four of the the sockets that they go into and then it went on still had to be tapped on I don't remember it being that uh, that hard to push on but I know they've got to be a close fit so I've put three case screws in that should really hold it tight and uh, seems to be it so let me put it all back together wish I'd looked in there first and uh, then try it and go from there right next check is all the case screws are in and tight and the quill feed is in and tight because you know sometimes things don't quite tighten up right particularly when it's such a shape like this you know I had that one and those two in there but when this gets tightened up it can just you know what I mean all right Let me put it all back together. All right, it's all back together. So I've put oil back in the gearbox and that, but so let's pull the clutch lever in. That works. I've switched the petrol on and put the choke thing on, so. Be a good boy, you always start first kick. What have I done? Have I done everything right? Plenty of petrol, everything switched on. I checked the ignition timing while I had everything to pieces. That was all fine. At least it's kicking over. What haven't I done? What haven't I connected? I'm going to put all the wires back on the coil. Plug caps back on. Plenty of cap. Oh. But then, if it had started straight away, it wouldn't seem to have a lot of compression. 
Oh, I adjusted that decompressor. I wonder if I adjusted it too much. And about. So I checked the decompressor. That was fine. So I thought, let me check the valve clearances. So then I noticed they didn't seem to be. They were the exhaust valve was miles out. A top dead centre, the inlet valve was seemed to be all right. So I pulled the side off again, and the engines are top dead centre now. There's one timing mark, there's another timing mark, and there's the double one that should be down here. So obviously I thought, oh, maybe I'm on the rock top dead centre. So I turned it round to the other top dead centre, and they were still miles out. So then I began thinking. Let me show you something. I had a look round, I found a witness mark, or in this case a witness chunk. Look, somebody's caught on there, and there's a chunk out of it, or at least it's been smacked into there. You remember the washer that was laid in the bottom? I think, at some point that washer I mean it can't fall off so obviously it must have been when I was putting the case on so it's my own fault but I think that has come down to there like that or down here somewhere anyway the uh, the drive for this has jammed completely and it sheared the key on the crankshaft pinion and that's why the valve timing is miles out. So, let me uh, see about taking that to bits. All right, this is gonna be a bit difficult to see, but if I can get sort of light there without blinding it. There's the keyway. And there's something there, look. But there's definitely no key in it. Well, <laughs> there's a bit of key in it. So. What I think might have happened is these. Hang on, let me move you a little bit. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> These things here tend to stick with oil. I think what's happened is at some point I've taken, when I was doing it, I must have had the cover on. I mean, this is pure supposition, but I can't, you know, imagine that I would drop a thing in there. I think that. I'm maybe taking the cover off and when I took the cover off it's brought one of these off with it never noticed it and it sort of then slid off because of the oil I've put it on and there's enough room for it to get all the way well is there if it was the bottom one it could however it's happened that seems to be the thing sheared kiwi so that's what locked it up in the first place and um Okay, right, <laughs> now we're going to see if we can get this off. <laughs> oh, I'm saying this, I've moved you again, hold on. Now I've got to see if we can get that, uh, that pinion off. Uh. Well actually, that came off straight away. I thought it was going to be really jammed on, but... There's the remains of the key in the keyway. And uh, hang on a second. Just talk amongst yourselves there. There is the bit I've just taken out of the keyway and the pinion. Remember when I was saying the other day 
it's always annoying when you can't find out what's wrong and I always like it when I at least find something broken well two things from this job which has taken forever I found out what it was and in the interim I fixed a couple of things in the gearbox i.e. those two new gears I changed and taken the end float out of the kickstart so now can we get that out of there Mm -hmm. there goes. So there we are. Job jobs. Now the next thing is, do I have I have lots of keys but sometimes the ones on bikes are a strange size so let's see if I can find a new key and uh, we'll put this back together right so there it is back together you see there are two timing marks on this two on that and then one to line up there this Woodruff key is an eighth inch key eighth inch key but it's about half the height of that. I mean, I really had to reshape it to get it to go on. It's actually on a little t on a taper, so the key is only there to line everything up. So I've got to make sure that goes on good and tight to hold that on the taper. So let me put the um, where is it? Let me put the oil pump worm drive back on which is actually a left hand thread so let me screw that on good and tight and then we'll put everything back together all right people this job was going to be finished on tuesday lunchtime it's now thursday lunchtime <sighs> tell you what i'm glad it was this and not the BSA because if it had been the BSA to get to the cam you've got to take that inner cover off which really means take well you can take it off by taking the nut off the end of the lay shaft but it's a bugger to get taken apart all right have we got compression oh yes we have Well, there's a job and a half. As I said, if nothing else, it's entertaining. All right, now I only have to put the bash plate on, and then that job is done. And then this afternoon, I will. Uh, stick the triumph up here I can take the bash plate off to drain the oil tank do that oil tank and then that's going to be it for this week all right then there we are really really finished so all done as I said at least I can replace those couple of bits in the gearbox and uh, what else did I do I'll just put it on the floor uh, what else did I do Oh, something else. Anyway, oh, that took the end play out of the kickstart shaft and those couple of little bronze shims I made up because, you know, the things you get, I haven't had any real problem with the quality of the things from India, the parts, but sometimes they're not exactly the same. So I guess that's it. They're maybe just a little slimmer, something like that, because they have a thing on them. Whatever. It's done. Is it really done?
yes, it's done. I switch the chip off. All right, so it was a long time coming. I hope you found it interesting. It was incredibly annoying, I have to say, constantly finding that what I thought it was wasn't it, and going on and on and on. And of course, seeing as the ultimate problem was in the timing chest, if you like, all that gearbox work, clutch, and even the touch did. Anyway, still haven't heard about my acquisitions, so next project, I don't know if you can just see the front wheel of it, we're going to do some retrofitting to the, B, the upgraded B50. So until next week when you see what that is, you all stay safe and enjoy yourselves.